everyone and welcome back to Crosswise the technology variety show that covers the cool things in tech. Doesn't necessarily cover the latest news, but we try and look at technology from a positive positive positive? What's positive? Positive and ethical standpoint. Now, this episode is gonna be interesting from a couple of points of view. First of all, we have a great panel. So let me introduce myself, because of course, we have the wonderful Jay, my co-host and my beautiful fiance. Hello, how are you doing, dear? <laughs> I am doing good, thank you. Uh, managing all this, uh, this new technology. And of course, because it's an Apple event, we have reassembled the finest team in Apple podcasting. Alex is back with us from Interface. Hello, Alex. Hi, good. Thanks for having me back. It's good to be back at recording another podcast with you guys absolutely it's great to have you now you now you've got three podcasts you've got uh ui chat charging status <laughs> i do think create a spotlight that's right yep so the different all things uh lots of different topics for different people really so yeah and uh, do go and check it out and also go and check out alex's youtube channels as well because although i'm not allowed to officially promote any ev videos or anything uh jay can tell you that it's a great video Oh, it really is, and 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 I, and I absolutely love it. Like, I learned a lot about about a certain type of charging that James cannot talk about <laughs> for a variety of reasons, and I, I, it helps me keep my keep my my head zooming down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so that's one reason. Great panel. Second reason it's going to be a great episode is because we're going to be talking about Apple's uh, what was it? Let loose. Yeah, I. I, I was trying to think of a title like Let Loose Kick Off Your M1 Blues or something like oh, that. <laughs> M1 Blues, that's terrible. <laughs> um, I was thinking about just simple crushing it. No, I, I, I could say uh, um, um, Apple got crushed by the uh, community. <laughs> okay, we will talk about that. But yeah, we're going to be talking about Apple's most recent event. Now, we're doing this a couple of weeks after events of it. The reviews are out. People, including people on this panel, have had some hands-on time with the devices. And the hysteria has died down a little bit, and we've got a bit more factual information on the devices. So are you saying that that uh, that that Alex got handsy with the, with, with the iPads? I, I don't want to know what I, Alex did with the iPads, but yes, no. Oh, jeez, Jay. I am sorry. No, I'm not. If, if Alex is if Alex's partner is listening to this, you can you can whack Jay around my head the next time you see her. It's fine, <laughs> yes. right? The third and by no means final reason, but the third reason this is interest episode is it, it's kind of a bittersweet moment. Actually, this is our first episode that isn't recorded on Squadcast. This is our first episode recording on Riverside. Now, look, we've been long time Squadcast supporters. We aren't going to go into much. In, 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 a, in a very public forum about why we've moved, but we are trying Riverside, which has a huge benefit. It means we are live streaming to not only Twitch, we're also re- streaming to a what is probably going to be a supporters audience live stream where you'll be able to potentially come and join us on not every episode, but on some episodes, we'll potentially do call-ins. Now, uh, our Twitch chat already said, but I want to be able to use all the fancy channel point effects and whack you over the head while we're streaming. That is one advantage of Riverside. None of that works because we're <laughs> not going through OBS. Anyway. Can I just say, by the way, has somebody who's who's like designed um, overlays for podcast recordings, I very much like their overlay. Like, because I like how it focuses on the guests, focuses on the chat, and it really gets you into just the meat and the potatoes. Okay, awesome. I'll keep a tab. You just watch. So Jex, Jex is one of our um, Twitch community who's now keeping a tab of how many times she has to retroactively hit one. Me- now, she can only hit me and Jay. Okay, we don't have that set up for, for podcast guests. Anyway, it's fine. So let's get into this a little bit because... This was an event, um, now oh, I've lost track of when this one is, May 7th, was it May 7th? I believe it was May 7th or around there because that's when I found some reviews on it. It was May 7th, I've completely lost track of when. Yeah, I yes, well. it was May 7th. <laughs> May, it was May 7th because I think uh, of the bank holiday in the UK on the 6th, I think. Yes, that was right, yeah. That was it because we, now it was another virtual event. I know we talked about this in the last, and we talked about this everyone. But I think we can firmly say now that 
I'm going to guess even for WWDC, I don't think we're going back to audience, in-person audience events with Apple. I was listening to a podcast after the, one of the last ev- events on this, and they made a good point. These events, as much as the community around it has been there to like, to be like the the like the camaraderie or the meet people who are in the ecosystem. These events are primarily for the industry leaders, yeah. for news snippets, and sometimes for consumers who are interested. But it is not as much focus on the community. What I was reading is like John Gruber went to a to a location in New York City where they where they where they had demo stuff set up, and I think that's how they're they're doing that. One of the benefits is I could see them possibly creating more community focused areas around the world and or having like little like pop up shops, even not same day could be like, hey, we're going to bring some people together because I know they've been doing like things like the Vision Pro Summit where people could come out to the labs or people could come out to different summits. Maybe they're focusing it where these events are announcing and the community aspect is going to be outside of it in a periphery event. I think so. I mean, Alex, you're maybe more of a, a member of a press than we are. Is that? Do you think that's the sort of thing that Apple are going to start doing? Have you heard anything? That, I mean, did they have anything in London, for example? They had one at Battersea Power Station. So Apple have got some sort of headquarters there and quite a big Apple store. And I, I noticed there was a guy from Mac Rumors, I can't remember his name, but he's from London, and he was at that thing that they had there, like a pop-up shop, essentially, with the iPads sometime after the event, I think pretty much after it. So it makes, it makes sense, doesn't it? It just means that people haven't got to travel halfway across the world to go and they can go and do it, which is quite good from an environment point of view, really. But um it means people can go locally and hang out with people locally. So, Can I bring up an interesting perspective on this, by the way, as somebody who's been to BlizzCon and has actually covered BlizzCon. I know BlizzCon is a Blizzard-focused event, but I know something interesting. I went to BlizzCon 2019, very much focused in Anaheim, California. Then during COVID, they went to a virtual BlizzCon, and it was actually pretty amazing. You got to see performers and people who submitted things all around the world, people who either yeah. from disability, travel, or a variety of reasons could not make it to it, and it was such an amazing event. They've gone back to a local event, but I really loved that COVID BlizzCon because, again, I got to co-stream I really have to be involved with it. And I, I kind of like virtual events for, for a lot of things. And then having small communal meetups or groups in a local area. And and that's it. I, I mean, obviously, Apple's, these meetups for Apple events are for the press. They aren't for fans like us. We couldn't just walk into that Battersea event. I didn't know if it was an Apple store at Battersea, though. Yeah, they, I think it's a recent, recent thing. But they've got a headquarters upstairs as well. Okay, Might some sort of offices. So, yeah, let's talk about. I think the first thing we need to talk about is this advert, the yes. ad for the new iPads. Well, particularly for the iPad Pros, right? How much controversy can one iPad, one advert for one iPad cause? So when I watched it live, I didn't even think. I just thought, oh, that's quite cool what they're doing. They're sort of saying that all of this stuff is inside this iPad. I didn't even I didn't even cross my mind that people go bananas over it. I just I don't know. It seems a little bit blown out of the water possibly, but I don't interested to see what you guys think. Well, I have seen people mention that other companies have done a similar ad to this. And yeah. that this is not the first time they've done it. So the concept's not a new one. It's not original to Apple. I mean, and if you go back to Pirates of Silicon Valley, good artists copy, great artists steal. I, you know, Apple's not always known to be the innovators and in, in new ones with the ideas. But I will say it was a little bit in poor taste because it was destroying some amazing devices. And instead of like trying to say, hey, we can do all this stuff, because I still prefer analog sound, even recorded. I still prefer analog sound in a lot of ways. Like I'm, I still believe you, you can do a lot of good with digital, but you still can't replicate some of the sound and i think part of it was the whole idea of like you're destroying all this a lot of what you're listening and reading and on the ipad was created with all these things uh we we were recording it live well not after the event but but we were doing a coffee chat and i remember one of our uh, mods definitely was cringing a lot because uh he's a huge into music and it was 
crushing it. I think, though, what has happened, because there are some reports, I think it was either The Verge who said Apple is no longer the darling. They're no longer the, we're going to get up against the man, like in the 1984 ads even. They are now the man. They're now the corporate behemoth. And I think the community has basically, Apple could do no wrong before, but they now... I, I have to, I'm, I don't think that's been the case for a long time for Apple. No, but I, it shows that like they, they, they almost, somebody in the media department thought, didn't think about the, all the repercussions of it. And, and, and I know it sounds overblown, but it was, again, destroying some things that like... Symbolic, okay, symbolically destroying musical instruments and books and things like that. I, the me, I, I, I'm, I think I'm more aligned with with Alex's view that it was an ad. I, I get the sensitivity around it, and I, yes, it might have been. Well, there's an old, um, there's an old. I'm trying to remember. Was it? Um, it's an old uh, Power Mac ad, and it was shown. It was used as like a director video, uh, di- a shockwave director demo in the iMac introduction when they were showing off the the not the iMacs, not the, the overpowered the blue and white G threes, but the G three uh, before that. They were showing off the power compared with Pentium twos, and we had all this stuff flying into this old Mac. That was that made a lot of sense. Like oh yeah, all this stuff. If they'd have done it, maybe like all the stuff flying into the iPad rather than being crushed. But I guess the idea was to emphasize how thin. So I don't think the concept was bad, but I think maybe they didn't gauge the reaction. They have apologized, but I also don't think that the media reaction was... I mean, you know it, you know that it's been taken notice of when Samsung do an ad trying to parody it. Uh, Just... And I'm like Samsung, you haven't even got proper tablets, but I say proper tablets. They've got tablets, but the problem is, I'm sorry, Google Android is still, to my knowledge, is still not anywhere near at the level of iPad OS in terms of tablet functionality. No, I don't think it is. And I think that was the biggest thing is, is if they had not shown actually destroying things, because I'm somebody who I I replace a lot of stuff with my phone and my and my tablet and technology. But I I can appreciate those devices, and I think if they had not shown it as d- destroying something, and especially when we're moving into a lot of people who are wanting to do more DIY stuff, a lot more physical items, mm. and they're showing de- a destruction. Maybe it could have been a lot better, and again, yeah. and also it could be maybe they wanted to get off of the uh, Trump trial news, so they had to find something to get upset about. <laughs> Well, there we go. Let's not get too political, JD. Exactly. Uh, and Jack said, make the point, absorbed and replaced instead of destruction. Since a better yeah, message. I agree. I I, I absolutely, yeah. And I think they, they could have easily done it. You know, maybe something like, uh, you know, o- Odo from Star Trek Deep Space Nine sort of morphing into, but no, they could, no. No, no, we're not going to replace René Arbor John Moore. We're not going to do an AI version of him. Anyway, so and let, also, let's... Can I add one final point that I saw? Yes. When Apple is trying to make a claim that they're being better for the environment, destroying is not a good thing to then be aligning yourself with. You good when point. you're already called yourself out. I think the last WWDC about some of your environmental practices that you're trying to do better on. Fair point, Alex. Before we move into what Apple actually did announce, rather than what they got yelled at for, any final thoughts on we had from you? Uh, the only thing I could think of is is that it is an ad at the end of the day. Like a lot of, if you look at the movie production world, the amount of vehicles that get destroyed when they produce car stunts, that's a horrific waste of everything. Um, it's just that we don't really see that. Whereas this is like, if you even like scrape the surface on how much stuff is wasted and, and how much stuff is destroyed when you're trying to produce ads at the end of the day, eh, I, I don't know. They're trying to make a message and then. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a little bit of a blow, but it's it is what it is, I suppose. So. And and I think it's really interesting. I mean, as as we're recording this, you know, it's really interesting with what we're about to talk about with all the power of these chips and mm. with 
Microsoft. Now we haven't I haven't really dug into this. The new Copilot Plus PCs, which are ARM based PCs, and they are say they are claiming that they are gonna outperform a MacBook Air. Well uh, and go on. Adding to that, um I can I, I can go behind a little behind the scenes. You and I are migrating our currently x86 architecture servers that we run the website and our Nextcloud instance on to ARM-based um, servers, and that really, and we're going to get more performance and better energy efficiency. Yes, but that I mean that it makes sense. It's more, it makes lots of sense. But I don't think I think the big difference is going to be first of all some really really worrying privacy stuff going on with this Copilot stuff. This. What's it? Uh, what's it called, Alex? The thing that they're doing, um, where it's going to record every recall, where it's going to record oh. every single thing you do on your PC for you to then go oh, back. Oh, and... I have used app like that early on, and I did not like those because. Mm. But the reason I'm mentioning that is because we're gonna let's talk. I don't let. Which order did they? Did they do the iPad Airs first, or did they do the Pros first? They did the iPad Air first, I believe. Let's start with the iPad Airs, then, because this, is, to be fair, this is a category of iPad that I'm probably most aligned with because my current iPad is an iPad Air. It's a fourth gen iPad Air. So, no M series chip for me. Okay. I mean, to me, this, um, these seem like a really good bump in. So, it's gone what, uh, to be M2. The FaceTime cameras moved to the right. So, what I would say is the right spot. The correct um, spot, yeah. The correct spot, really, for a tablet. Um, I think back when the... Because it was the iPad 2 that came with a camera. I think at that point, everyone was holding their iPads tab uh, portrait. Yes. Yeah. Now people are using them as, you know, in landscape mode. And I think that camera placement makes a lot of... It's obviously got center stage. The biggest change here is we've got the 11-inch. So it that bumps it up just a tiny little bit from the 10.9 it was before. Tiny mm-hmm. bit. It's probably not going to be noticeable. But I think the big one here is this is the first time we've gotten a bigger iPad in a not in the non pro category. So this is what I've been waiting for for a very long time. So my iPad Air, my iPad Pro actually is a 2017. And I've always thought my next one I wanted to be a big iPad. But I can't justify spending 1500 quid on a an iPad Pro just to use YouTube on it and stuff. So, um, so I'll be waiting for a, a big iPad that's cheaper, and this, is, this seems really good. So I'm glad they've done it. And and you know, storage. I think we but am I right? We bump storage a little bit on these as well. That's right. The base is now one two eight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now I think what one twenty eight gig, especially given that these have got USB C, mm. and a lot of apps are support supporting. Editing, editing of external drives, I think actually pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Um, I was reading um, on a, a couple of reviews on on this. Some of the biggest complaints on this are that the it's not OLED, and no. that it has raised the. Am I right, or did, or did I misread this? That it has raised the price a bit. For the iPad Airs. I can't remember how much they used to be. They're five ninety nine think... UK now. No, but that is the same. It's the same price. Okay. okay, it's it's the old. Oh, I get it now. It is the old iPad that has lowered its price. That oh that is yeah, now... but yeah. Well, we'll come to that because that is a really interesting thing. Is that out of that tenth gen iPad? Is as you said, no OLED. But again, the OLED tech it has always the the fancy display tech has always been in the Pro first. Yep, it will come down to the ipad air but for i would say now alex look me you know me and you both have ipad air no you've got an ipad pro sorry you've got an ipad pro yeah 11 inch jay's got a 12.9 inch ipad pro pre m1 as well yeah pre i've got a 10.5 inch ipad pro actually oh okay so you okay so you're oh wow so you're not even on one of the new design ones you're on the the older one yep right (laughs) wow okay I honestly am looking at these, and I'm going to get my next iPad when I need an iPad because these things last so long nowadays. I'm going to go with an iPad Air and probably the 11-inch. I've got a reason, though, trying to fit an iPad 
a 13 inch iPad into my bag is hard. Can, can I put a little pause there? Can I suggest we talk about what iPads we're going to potentially in our future by after we've gone through the whole lineup? Good shout. Then, yep, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's go back to where. So iPad Air 6. Now, a lot of the reviews, so people are saying it's not as thin and light, which makes sense. Now, they're saying it's more, like, this is annoying. They're saying people can play it's more expensive than the last past iPad 10. Yes, because it's a better device. Yes. It, 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 in every single way. For a start off, it's got better USB-C support. I think, and I might be wrong on this. In fact, no, I'm not wrong. The iPad, the 10th gen iPad is USB-C, but it's only USB 2.0. Like the 15, the okay. iPhone 15 is only USB 2.0, whereas the 15 Pro is USB uh, 3. Yeah, so it's a USB-C port is up to 2.0, up to 480 megabits per second or megabytes per second. Megabits. Yeah, yeah megabits per second. Yeah. Now look, for, for someone who's using a, first of all, this means that every single iPad that Apple sell is now USB C, mm-hmm. which buys up is good. Makes, makes absolutely life because that gets it and puts in line with the iPhones now and and the Android. And I mean, it really means that things are now much better. You don't have to get new cables for everything. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I was really happy about, and people might see this in the social clips. I realized that the thing I bought to use headphones on my iPad Air will now work as a TR- TRRS adapter for my iPhone, which means if you have a fancy audio interface like we do, plug that bit into your iPhone or iPad, plug that into the Vocaster, and we can put phone calls and stuff onto our live stream and I can Ooh, record from the iPhone. Nice. So I more was, was saying that if you're going to go drawing, do weigh some of the advanced features of, of the iPad Pro if you need those. And honestly, that is well, a good point. We haven't even talked about the iPad Pro oh. yet. So I know so no, I'm just saying they were yeah. saying that's one of the reasons why you might want to consider I, I think you're right. I mean certainly and let you know, but for me the iPad Air, I think if you're not on a budget and don't and as Alex says, you don't want to spend the money on a fifteen hundred pound iPad Pro because you probably don't need that feature set. Now Alex, like I you, I assume, are probably going to be content consumption. I know you're like me and you edit, I think, edit your podcast audio on your iPad. I, not anymore, no. No? Oh, no. What? Oh, no. No. Oh, Alex. No, I'm, jo- I'm joking. <laughs> what, what, I mean, maybe that's a better question, man. What do you use your current, what is, what, actually, no, let's come back to that when we talk about okay. what products we, yeah. Exactly. Let's, let's, let's look. But there's one very important question i think we need to start with so because one of the questions we're going to be asking on each of these devices is what version of wi-fi do they support so now alex am i right this is on the air it's six wi-fi six right. the ipad air is wi-fi 6e oh it's so 6e that's right h211ax okay. okay. but I've, i'm not 100 percent sure if it supports six gigahertz oh interesting but well, then i'm not don't... buying if it, if it wants to put wi-fi seven <laughs> Well, well, we're going to come to that because it's a this is a rolling <laughs> this is a rolling question. But why why would it be six E if it didn't support six gigahertz? They haven't specified. It just says simultaneous dual band. I'm not hundred percent sure. It doesn't doesn't actually specify. So it would be up to someone to test that when it's out. But yeah, ah, very interesting. It might make sense. Anyway, so look, I think the iPad Air is a great choice of device. Alex, any thoughts on, on from what they basically went through? Because it's, it's basically a bit of a design bump and a nice jump to the M2, right? It's like a facelift, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I had some hands-on time with it the other day, and it's 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 fine. Like, it's, it's, it's a really nice device, and I haven't used the old iPad Air, but as a replacement for my iPad, it'd be, be pretty good. Um, I think they've done quite a good job with it. Yeah. Did you get a chance to see the new keyboard? Because they've, they've released a new keyboard accessory for this, haven't they? They have, yeah. I would, the only thing I've noticed is the trackpad. Have they released a new track? Have they released a new keyboard for the iPad Air or is it the iPad Pro? There's, I couldn't. The new keyboard for the iPad Pro. Mm. Um, they, I think the same. The same keyboard is for this one, right? And because of how thin the iPad Pro is, which we'll get to, the keyboard for that only works with that. Right. Yeah. Which is, and it's still an expensive thing. But again, iPad Air, good proposition. 599 starting point for 128 gig of storage. Again, 
let's talk. Let's come back to use cases in a bit. Let's talk though about. I think we have to move on to the uh, iPad Pro. Oh, I can confirm. Yeah, Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro, the Magic Keyboard for for the iPad, and then there's the Folio that's for the 10th gen iPad. Yeah, gotcha. So there's a whole line of accessories, keyboards, yeah, accessories, and that again is something we're going to talk about because the pencil lineup is going to be fun to discuss. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> let's we'll pencil talk. it in for later on in the episode. Gosh, oh my gosh. Let's talk about the new iPad Pro. Now, they aren't calling this a generation. They're calling this the iPad Pro with M4. Now, some of you might be thinking, hold on a second, M4? But we've just got M3, and we don't have any M4 Max. I might I might be wrong here. Now, Jay, correct, Jay challenged me on this assertion, but I want to put a caveat on this assertion. This is the first time Apple have debuted new a new M series chip on a non Mac product. Yep, that's big. I did hear somewhere I can't remember where that apparently the M3 design uh, hit a technical roadblock. Um, oh, so therefore they had to move to the M4. I I can't remember where I, where I read that or heard that. Might be on the actually it was on the Vergecast I think, but they said. There's some sort of information out there that the the sort of the chip design of the M3 was had a had an end date basically. Ah, interesting. So it might be perfectly fit for purpose for uh, MacBook Air for yep. a, uh, Mac. Well, we haven't got uh, Mac Minis with M3 yet, have we? I, I think I'm, I don't think we do. I think they're still. Can someone just double check? I'm doing I, it right now. That's just the M2. That one. Yeah. Because I think the only devices that uh, I think it's the MacBook Pros. The MacBook Air and the iMac, which are M3 based, if I remember correctly. No, oh, wait, no, sorry, I didn't miss book. Oh, and the Studio is M2. Yeah, the, the the Mini is uh, the Mini is M2, an yep. M2 Pro. Because I've got an M2 Pro Mac Mini that's doing everything for this right now, and honestly, I love it. I've got an M3 MacBook Air, and that thing is just battery life is incredible. But that makes yep. a lot of sense if they could not. Because obviously it's going to have to be effectively maybe a more optimized chip for an iPad. So maybe they couldn't get the M3 design into something small. I don't know. Yeah, but this would have all been planned years in advance anyway, but yeah. So it's very interesting. Now, it's still got all the same features. It's got obviously Thunderbolt 4 slash USB 4. Uh, I, you know, that makes it for a portable video editing Mm. station. Um, because yeah um being able to connect to fast storage and now oh alex at that sort of speed because that's 40 gigabits isn't it yeah 40 gigabits on thunderbolt that's what it's saying yeah 40 gig up to usb4 yeah thunderbolt 3 up to 40 gig yeah so in theory and i know you can buy these you could connect that to a 10 gig network adapter well you could even yeah even an sfp you plus could, adapter, could you? yeah. Oh, what to go uh, SFP plus? In fact, actually, could plus you 10 go gig. to yeah? That is ten gig. You could probably yep. go to. Is it QSFP for twenty five? I th- think so. Yeah, I should know this. I, but yeah, I, 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 I was going to say. <laughs> I was thinking. I was asking the right person. Look at Alex's. <laughs> I was like, uh, don't ask me. I don't really know this stuff. I, I use Netgear routers at home. <laughs> That's going to be the shock revelation, is it? Alex is using Netgear of all pieces. Um, oh. Oh, that's going to be a with that uh, with, with um from two thousand five probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Alex is on the links. It's WRT fifty four G. As long as you do WDD WRT on it, I'm okay. Yeah. There you go. N- nice little reference there. But the point is that con- connectivity. You know, plug that into a fu- a good Thunderbolt three or Thunderbolt four dock. You oh, can yeah. do external displays. You can do your drives. You can heck. You can plug that into audio capture and video capture devices now with the changes that came in with, I think with iOS 16 or 17, you can actually do video capture now. Oh, um, right, I didn't know. That's quite cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You can, um, so you can actually, yeah, you can, um, there's been people, I think there's been people Twitch streaming. Oh. From these. Interesting. You know, it's kind of cool, actually. Mm. Um, well, there's, there's, um, there's an app, I believe this is the case, there's an app that will let you, Effectively, you you plug in a uh, capture 
device, like an Elgato Cam Link or, or something similar. And you can then use your iPad as an external monitor to play your games on. I've seen that. And, and, and then people have been taking that into the Vision Pro. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? Because you can capture the screen. Wait, no. You can capture the screen or use an app on a local, like, like, but there's, there are people having like developing apps. And I think, and I think it might be even be one out. I, again, we don't have Vision Pros, but I, but someone was playing their Nintendo Switch on Vision Pro <laughs> in front That's of their cool. TV. <laughs> that could have been playing the Switch. They just like, <laughs> that That's is cool. such an interesting concept. But I think, oh, the big, uh, and, and Jax wants to say, um, says don't ask me my brain yells thunderdome every time you say thunderbolt it's very distracting oh gosh yeah for for well thunder thunderbolt is is such an interesting history because it was an, an apple and intel co-development mm-hmm. and then it it really for a long time felt like it was just on apple devices i remember the original thunderbolt thunderbolts one and two were not us well USB C wasn't really a thing at this point they were using the mini display port connector mm. for Thunderbolts 1 and 2, um, which were 10 gigabit and 20 gigabit, respectively, which still is kind of crazy. But anyway, the, this iPad... Now, Alex, I take it you've seen the iPad Pro in person. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How thin is it? I mean, is it at what they're claiming? It's ridiculous. Like, I picked up the, the Air First and the Pro, and it's like, it doesn't weigh anything. I mean, obviously, it just... It's so they've done such a cool thing with it. Like it, it's, it honestly feels so much of a leap forward than anything they've done recently in terms of its just lightness. Now, I don't know how that's going to be in terms of rigidity and sort of its robustness, but it looks cool. So, Oh no. Are we, as long as we don't get another, what is, was, was Bendgate. Bendgate. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting point because um, I fix it. I have done a teardown. Oh, really? Um, and, and and actually, I think one of the Apple execs even addressed this. I'll find the, I'll put this in the show notes. But what they've done is they've put, like, some framing inside it. Oh, okay. Almost like a rigid, like a mm. spine to stop that from happening. Nice. That's good. So, and apparently that that's kind of a design. It's, but yet, yeah, impossibly thin. Now, that means, of course, that you're going to, obviously, as you mentioned, you need, you can't use the existing keyboard accessories. So there's a new one, which does look really cool. Yeah, I'm amazed that we've got it that thin. I mean, obviously, now, there's more, Jay, you put something in the show notes here. It's just something I'm clear, curious about. Single USB-C port, potential lot behind the future. Uh, are those two separate points? Two separate points. But they said, like, like th- that was some of the, 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 the gripes that, that Wired had, was that was a single USB-C port. What is the dong... What is the the addition capability of a single USB-C port on an iPad. Like, how many devices could you thread or dongle into it? Well, but it's Thunderbolt. It's Thunderbolt, but I don't think... I mean, like, for for that use case, I don't think you're looking at potentially a, 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 you know, a limit that someone's going to need to worry about. You look at, like, things like the CalDigit uh, TS4. Is it the TS4? TS4 dock. Let me just pull this up quickly. And yeah, Jack said, I mean, you wouldn't keep your iPad in a back pocket anyway, would you? So the risk of sitting on it would be theoretically smaller. Yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, but these things are, you know, you want something thin and light. You know, if you want a a, a more sturdy device, go for a laptop, I guess. So hang on. And, and Jack, that's also another another reason why I'm glad it's thinner because fit, Jack mentioned about um, I'm very accustomed to the pockets of lady trousers and you can't fit anything into those anyway. And yeah, like, like I, my iPad is hard to fit into anything. Your iPad's hard to fit into a flipping me aircraft. You have to add additional weight for your, <laughs> yeah. just, right. So here we go. So the TS4, the TS4, uh, Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt dot from CalDigit. Okay. So let me just get this right. It has 18 ports, if I'm getting this right. Wow. So it's got, okay. Yeah. This is what Thunderbolt 4 allows for folks. Okay, so you've got micro SD and uh, SD. You've got audio combo out. You've got multiple USB C outs uh, on the front. You've got USB A on the front. You've got four USB A's on the back, a display port, audio in and out. And then you've got 2.5 gig Ethernet and lots more Thunderbolt ports on the back. Well, what's so, the price, though? Hmm. I'm just asking, just because that's the other. 
Well, let's have a look. Because I do get their point. Without having to buy extra stuff, you are limited by a single USB-C port. Well, yes and no, though, because um, uh, here we go. Availability is it is three fifty, so three hundred and sixty dollars in the US, three hundred and twenty five pounds in the UK, and uh, three hundred and twenty five euros in Europe. Um, and the EU price excludes VAT, though. Now, but Jake, that's a very fair point. Except when something like this, okay, this I think was about sixty or sixty or seventy pounds. So that's got- Euro, yeah. So I mean, it's but it's still, it, 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 it's still a cost. You just got to keep in mind. I, I'm I'm just putting the yes, but you have to. You, the thing is, I don't know if I, I I I the point they're making I think is unfair in the tablet class. Do any of Samsung's devices have more than one USB C port? That's a good. That's a good question. I mean, okay, your your sister's just got a new Lenovo tablet. Yeah. You're going there tonight, yeah? Yeah. I what honestly homework for a podcast and we'll put we'll put this we'll get a, we'll put this into the show notes. Get a photo of that tablet. How many USB C ports does it have? I, I will, and 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 that's a good point. I'm I'm just just we are living in like in a lot of don, in a dongle world in a lot of ways, and I'm just trying to be mindful of that part. But yeah, and the other thing that that, that Wired said was that the potential. They're saying what. what the potential of the hardware felt like it was locked behind uh, future software updates or updates to apps because they're built for the, so wondering like a, why would you buy this now? Because it's not going to get you much of a performance upgrade compared to what you already had. It depends what you've already got though, doesn't it? So, uh, you know, that's a very, very interesting point. Let's actually, um, I mean, first of all, let's, let's loop back to that because I want to talk about the display. Because the display, now, this is a, what we call it, a tandem OLED. That's right. Yes. yes. Okay. Again, we've got one person here who's experienced this. It's two, it's basically two OLED panels sandwiched on top of each other with clever stuff to make it bright. Yep. Is it as good as we say, Alex? The only thing I noticed, I'd put the air and the pro next to each other. The, the, the harshness of the white on the screen was, it, it looked more harsh than the iPad Pro, if that makes any sense. It looked more natural on the on the iPad Pro. Um, on the iPad A, you mean? No, it looked more natural on the Pro. Oh, okay, interesting. When, when you had only when you had them side by side, right? Okay, you could just tell that the colours weren't. They looked more normal. Can I ask a uh, clarification question? Did either of them have True Tone turned on? I don't know. It's a very good question, actually. Yeah, but they both will support True Tone. Yes, yeah, but it's whether or not they had it turned on. But it's a really good question. Yeah, I think the brightness levels, was it a thousand? No. Might be it's ridiculous amounts of brightness. I sh- we should have we should have not got these facts together, but um can someone just check on the brightness levels on those two devices, the nits? And I don't mean the type that you get at school. So the pro both of the pros can do sixteen hundred nits peak at HDR and a thousand a thousand at standard and XDR. So Now that's impressive. That is impressive for an iPad because one of the things I struggle struggle with my iPad, if I and I do this, folks, if I want to go out on a Sunday when I'm doing a podcast edit and go to a pub and sit outside if it's a nice day, that's where I start to struggle because my iPad's bright. My iPad therefore cannot keep up with that brightness. I typically go in inside. Um, well, what's quite interesting, this one's got that um, matte finish like the the big pro displays. Oh, yes, yeah. You, you, so can, spec it, get... you can spec it with a... You can spec it, sorry, with a nano texture display, but weirdly, only on the terabyte and two terabyte versions. I don't know why. I guess that's for thinking that's for the price point, isn't it? But we would yeah. want that. But again, now, what storage is that? Is that 256 gig that starts out? Or is that still... 256 on those two, yep. Okay. Again, now, the fact... I mean, does it blow up anybody else's mind that you can get two terabytes of storage in in something that thin? It does. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> And SSD or slash flash storage. Well, mm. it's SSD. It's M- it'll be oh, MDME. Yeah. But still, MDME that is it pretty phenomenal. It's just the size of a thing. And again, what, 11 and 13-inch models? Yep. Now, again, six Wi-Fi 6E. We'll come back to that in, in a little bit. But it's in, I think, Jay, you're, I think, I mean, look, I really like the design of this thing. Um, 
Am I right, Alex? We put the, the, the cameras in the same. We put the camera in the right place again. You know. Yeah. yeah, it's a landscape camera. Yeah, that makes so much more sense. But both models have center stage now, which is great. I think the iPad Pro does have the lidar scanner, whereas the uh, it does, does yeah. not. Yeah, they What's... have removed one of the cameras. There, have you seen that? I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. they did remove a camera, but. Here's a question, honestly. I think it's got the 48 megapixel camera, hasn't it, from the back from the 14 as its main camera thing? It's got a 12. Oh, oh. Uh, it's got a 12 megapixel camera. Okay, that's the true. But here's that's a... the true depth camera. Sorry, actually. Oh, that's that's the front camera. And then the back camera is 12 megapixels as well. Okay. Yeah. So, Jay, go on. Um, two, two things to note because I I didn't even think about this. Uh, I saw this in the reviews. The iPad Pro has Face ID. The iPad Airs have Touch ID, and the Pros have four speaker audio in all four corners, and four studio quality microphones. Whereas the Air has landscape stereo speakers and two microphones. Right. Okay. Now, to be fair, that's always been the distinguishing. The iPad Pro ha- has always been one to have Face ID, Touch ID. Do you know what Touch ID on the iPad Air, at least on the fourth gen? It does look, it works well. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I've, it's got, in, I've got Touch ID on my iPad mini as well. It works really well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. want the, uh, the iPad mini, but it's like a mini version of the. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It does work because that's where your finger's going to be to turn it on. It works. Yep. Face ID works on the I- iPhones. And it, you know, again, I, it works well on the, on the Pro, especially now in landscape mode. It, but it's it's fine. It, it to me that's and it makes sense that you're going to have those jumps again. If these are the studio quality microphones that are in the MacBook Air, they are good microphones. We recorded the episode uh, with Jay oh, on really? the MacBook Air. Oh mm. yeah, you were there for it. Were you there for it? I can't remember. No, I'm no, tra- no who that did... was with uh, Hugo of Masterhost. That was with Hugo from Masterhost. Oh, okay. The audio quality was astounding. From a MacBook Air, Mike. I mean, mm. I know because I think you've got MacBook. You've got a uh, um, I've got M two, M two, which I think yeah. has the same mics. It is more than adequate, and if that's the same quality microphone they put into the iPad Air, this thing starts to become a really powerful tool for creators. Now, okay, l- where do we want to go? Do we want to talk the Apple Pencil Shuffle? That's not a new product, by the way. Um, <laughs> do we want to talk Apple Pencil, or do, do we want to talk Pro Apps? Let's do the pencil first. Okay. <sighs> so we have a new Apple Pen- the Apple Pencil Pro. All right. I'm throwing it out to you two. What, uh, Alex, we, again, I'm assuming you've gotten to try this. Yeah, very briefly, yeah. The little, um, I think you, the, the only thing I tried was this, you can squeeze it and it will, it will open up a little menu thing. That's the only feature I tried out because I, I couldn't remember what else it, it did on the spot. But um, <laughs> it's... Uh, I think I think people are going to get a bit confused because it's four now. But yeah, yeah, that's my concern. That's my concern as well. The, the other thing it's got is this sort of tilt sensor where you can uh, adjust the angle. Now, oh, uh, okay. I'm not an artist. My Apple Pencil is used inside a ferrite to scrub audio and get rid of audio, uh, mostly Jay's audio. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> I gave him uh, the bird for that. <laughs> you do, yeah. Hey, this is a video. This is a video podcast. We no longer have to sacrifice. Uh, we we need to decide if we're actually going to publish this as video. By the way, we will. Uh, I think we should still should. But we'll, we'll say that. But also for the audio anyway. listeners, though. Yeah. Anyway. So, exactly. Injection silence is the lady. I see how it is. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 To be fair. No. To be fair, I have to cut much of my own audio out. And um, anyway, we'll see. see. Right. But, That's one uh, Von camera for James. That is. <laughs> 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 I'm liking having this live audience, by the way. How's everyone else? <laughs> Jen, like, as a quick aside, how's everyone feel like? Do, I, I don't feel under pressure I doing know. this live to Twitch. What it, do you think, Alice? Because this is the first time you've done this live. No, it's it's fine. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, Because yeah. Yeah. honestly, it I like how we can just do the Twitch side, not to worry about having like, because I've done so many complicated things. I did 189 episodes or so of podcasts <laughs> live to Twitch. <laughs> it, it's difficult. It, it's hard. Anyway, let, let's go back. But, um, <laughs> but, um, so, so we've the Apple- got the, the Apple Pencil Pro, which is only compatible with the new Airs and the new Pros. Well, it does work with the iPad Air um, 
Sorry, you are right. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I forgot the iPad Air only had an M2. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, that's been the jump, hasn't it? It's, it's M2s for the Airs, mm. M4s for the Pros. So you've got that. Now, that only works on most devices. What's interesting is the existing Apple Pencil, the second gen, I think that won't work on the Pros. Now, it will work on the Airs, I think. No, so the iPad, so the oh. Apple Pencil second gen, oh, it doesn't yeah. work on any of the new stuff. Right. The, the USB-C Apple Pencil, that weird one, works on them, which is so odd. I th- think it might be to do with the wireless charging. I think you are right. Yeah, they must have had to make adjustments to the wireless because that USB C one can't wireless charge, it just USB C charges. Mm, that's right. Now, in fairness, because it's USB C charging, at least that means you're not having to stick it in the end. Yeah, yes. I, think you, I don't think you can even do that. I think it's a it slides out to a real USB. A, yeah, yeah. It's a um a socket you plug in, so so it's not as bad as the original first gen where you literally risked snapping your hands Apple Pencil because yes. you had to oh. put it in the bottom. bottom. But so... no, yeah. And then and, and then having to like to like not, not not lose the nub and then chocolate would like to play with that with that that the uh cap and oh my gosh, I almost oh. lost the cap one time. <laughs> for reference for our for maybe our listeners who don't have the same history as our Twitch streamers do, chocolate was um, was Jay's cat. Um, one of Jay's many cats, I should say, um, yeah. and a very, very missed pet. So, um, and the USB C Apple Pencil and the first generation work with the um, first, second, third, and fourth generations of iPad Pros. Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the Apple spec sheets right now. Okay, interesting. I'm I'm actually I'm curious about how the first generation works with the newer iPad, but. Uh, before oh, I'm confused. I'm confused. <laughs> Me too. Well, they, honestly, because well, they've listed it as, they've but, listed it as iPad Pro 11 inch first, second, third, and fourth, whereas the yeah. first generation iPad Pro is actually 9.7 inch. It is. Yep. That's not. It that's is. not compatible with the USB C ones. Okay, so. I am so confused yep. on all. Oh, is it not? Okay, so what's compatible with the USB C iPads? Then? The third iPad Air. That makes sense, yeah. When it moved to USB C, that makes sense. So I think did the third mine... gen. No, wait, 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 wait. Did the third gen move to USB C? I'm now utterly confused. Um, yeah, it's showing third they, on the because they they brought back the iPad Air name during the COVID time. Oh, that's right. Yes, I remember that. But I don't know what it. I can't remember. You know. <laughs> but the point is that first the first gen Apple Pencil is lightning only. Now, it will work with the iPad 10th generation, but via a weird adapter that you have to get. Maybe that's why it can work with older stuff, because you can use the adapter. Well, it's got two asterisks next to the 10th gen. If I scroll okay. down to the bottom, it does say here, required to work with the 10th like USB-C adapter. That's that's the only model it has that asterisk on. Hang on. What is the iPad Air 3rd gen? Then? Yeah, I'm confused. I've lost track. Basically, you might want to... Oh, the Pencil iPad Air in third... a time with the Apple Genius. <laughs> oh, so the iPad Air third gen looks like the iPad Pro ten point five one that I have got. Oh, but with USB C. No, it's got Lightning. Okay, so how can that? So that, how can that work with a uh, what with a USB C pencil? No, that works with the, the first gen pencil. Oh, first light... gen, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Right? Okay. When did this come the... out then? Okay, <laughs> that's that's fine. Oh, I've lost track. Oh. When these I, remember, no, no, I remember that iPad. I remember that iPad Air. I oh, it was 2019, just before right. COVID. Basically, I am glad Apple's moving to using the chip denominations and not yes. the actual yeah. generation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Now, this is the iPad that brought the iPad Air name back. Then, yeah, that's right. Yes, because it was the new iPad Air at that point. Yes, you are right. Um, so <laughs> that's. But the USB-C one, we, so the second gen will work with basically the fourth gen Air, the fifth gen Air. Yep. And then the, I think about like any of the 11 and 12.9 inch USB-C. That's correct. Based. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. We will include a link in the show notes to the Apple page to show you. But cho- choose a pencil page, yeah. It's, <laughs> wow. it's complex. But... <laughs> In theory, though, what should start to happen is the first-gen pencil should go away soon. 
you would not need to buy that unless you've got a ninth gen or older iPad, really. Well, the, um, if I wanted to buy a pencil, that's the only one I could use with my one. Of course it is. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But interestingly, not on your Mini. I know. You'd have to have a second gen over USB-C yep. for your Mini. And that's where it gets confusing. But here, so I think what's now going to happen, man, is basically for the, for any the iPad Airs and Pros going forward, you... You've got okay. Let's just cleave this up right. iPad 10th gen, you get the USB C pencil if you want it. The Airs, you can have the USB C or the Pencil Pro, and the same with the Pros. You have the Pencil Pro or the USB C pencil. I'm going off of US prices. This will yeah. change. It's 129 for the Apple Pencil Pro, so that is mm-hmm. the price that the pencil's been at. Been at no. The first generation was was a hundred dollars, but since the second generation and beyond, it's been one twenty nine, and the yep. USB C now is seventy nine dollars. That's right, which is actually fair. But the the in annoying thing about that is you can the pencil second gen is still one hundred and twenty nine, so you kind of lose out there a little bit if you're on an older device. Yeah, and for those wondering, like I know it has the slide out. You could still plug in a USB C to USB C into your iPad, and then I mean, yeah. so, so of and you, could, yeah, yeah. you have to weigh in the fact do you, for the for the extra money, do you want magnetic charging, and do you want some of the extra features, or can you get by with because the the pencil has always charged pretty dang fast. I remember sometimes I I brought it from zero to a hundred in literally like five minutes, just pour yourself a cup of coffee. And, and it makes an interesting question, right, for for, for all of us. N- I don't think Eve, any any of us are artists, right? No. I tried. No. <laughs> no, I've tried as well. We have artists in the family. Honest question. I'll start with Alex. If you, were, you, if you were getting a new iPad today, ignore your current iPads for a moment, which, and you were going to get a pencil, which which would you choose, honestly? Well, probably the, the Pro one, possibly, because... Yeah, yeah. Because if I was going to buy a new iPad Air, that's because I'd it just it'd be nice to have it to wirelessly charge. Okay, fair point actually. And also, I guess depending on the apps you were using, that squeeze feature could be very handy if it's because it is going to be through an API for developers to set up. That's a really good yeah. point. But also, it's got the Find My support. That's the only Apple Pencil with that Find My support. What that looks that's like, true. I don't know. I don't know if you, I don't know if it has a U1 chip inside. It probably does, but. Oh, what for real to wide band where you can literally turn your phone? Yeah, it probably does, doesn't it? Yeah, you don't, I'd imagine so because it's actually that's. I mean, I have to admit, having ultra wide band support and find my for my for my keys for my air tags. Well, I is... leave, I leave an air tag in my car, so I know where I've left it. I oh, do nice. that. I, I do that as well, and that and that way, I I, I know if like someone took my car. Yep. Jay has a, more air tags than an entire Apple store. Yeah, Jay I'm the literally... reason why they had to increase the air tag limit. <laughs> Oh, is there a limit, is there? There, there is a limit. They, oh. they, they increased, I think it's like 32 now. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, but, that's fine. But She's nearly there, to be fair. Oh, geez. <laughs> no, you're not that bad. No, you, but I I would have to say, and I'm, I'm being very like sincere, I would have to weigh how much money I have at the time because $80 is a, is, 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 is a tempting offer. I know I lose the, the squeeze and the charging the find my, but one twenty nine is a big ask. It's one hundred and thirty bucks. That's true. That's true. For me, I think I would go Pro Two because I would like that ability. But what I'm going to say is, if I was just taking notes, right, just using something like Good Notes, which Good Notes has gone subscription. Ah, oh, that's... um. Also, if you yeah. want engraving, you have to go the Pro. Okay, you're not mm. doing well. I'm a pencil, you mean? No, but because of the little pullout. Oh, right. You can't. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see. I've, yeah. I've never had an Apple pencil in growth because I have. <laughs> okay. The reason I haven't is because I ever want to sell that pencil. It makes it really hard to sell if it's engraved. The battery going to be um, still any good if you sell it? I mean, <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, but no, for just note taking, right? Even forget good notes for a second. If you're just using free form or Apple Notes, do you need the functionality of the if Pencil you, Pro? If you're just doing that, you could probably just get the USB C one. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. So because that's honestly, yeah, it, 
because if you think about it, it uh, it's just like a stylus. I mean, I know it's a little bit more advanced than a stylus, but if you think about it, it is still a stylus. And the and the other features like the haptic feedback and all that turn it into more of a pencil feel. But again, right. if you're just doing notes, I, I I honestly think the regular pencil. Yeah. So then this brings me to I think I don't think there's much more to say about the the, the pencils. We know the lineup. I've been asking a question all the way through about Wi-Fi. You might think, why why do you care? It's because I want to ask Alex a a question. And it comes kind of uh, off the back of an event that Unify held that Alex hasn't actually watched yet. We we have. But I think you know the gist of of where they're going. Uh, And it's really interesting because they were talking about their Wi-Fi 7 products. Now, they do have Wi-Fi 7 products. But you have also seen all the hype around now is it the Eero Pro Max 7 Jay that's been the one that's been doing the virals yes that's the, that's the one that like Linus and all the different places and that's why I've been seeing people saying I threw away my ubiquity gear and I went with Eero and all that you threw I've it away that. you threw it away while Eero paid you and then exactly. you put it straight back up is what you probably did so Alex <laughs> genuine question right so we're talking the 10th gen and the iPad mini that are currently on offer, I have Wi-Fi 6. Mm-hmm. So 802.11 AX is the standard for both 6 and 6E. Mm-hmm. Now, the iPads Air and Pros have 6E. So the question I want to ask you is, that's not Wi-Fi 7? No. Does it matter? So I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not, 6E does it on paper mean that it should have 6, 6 gigahertz, but Apple's a little bit opaque when it comes to their spec sheets where it's not 100% a given. I imagine it probably is. No, probably not. I can't off the top of my head remember all the benefits that Wi-Fi 7 has, but it is likely like Wi-Fi 6 tailored towards dense environments. Um, the amount of device it can support is going to increase. I, I, probably not. I mean, the amount of bandwidth that one device can pull is is fairly limited. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, because unless... You, so there's two parts to this, right? Why uh, A higher throughput Wi-Fi is only good if you have the incoming WAN in- internet connection, for want mm-hmm. of a bit, to support it, right? Because if you don't have... I mean, realistically, unless you've got above a gigabit incoming connection, Wi-Fi 7 ain't going to help you. Well, the also, also the other thing, to achieve those per-client speeds, such as like one gig, which I did some testing with their Unified Express the other day and got over it with just, about, just under a gig wow. peer-to-peer. You have to have channel widths of 160 megahertz. Now, if you don't live in the middle of nowhere like I do, you live with lots of neighbors, having 160, me- having 160 megahertz channel widths is being, and for no reason, is being quite a bad Wi-Fi neighbor. Um, you're taking up a lot of spectrum. So if you don't need it, then it's probably not like a neighborly thing to do in terms of spectrum reuse. So, right, because that yeah. means you're you're hogging more of it. If you're in a dense, like a block of flats like I am, Yep you're using more of the available spectrum just for your Wi-Fi. So really, your channel widths in a in that environment. And I think we've talked about this on a previous episode, if I remember correctly. We've talked about all of this. and Did a Wi-Fi episode, didn't we? We did. We yep. we probably should do more Wi-Fi episodes because I think Jay's itching to talk more. We need to do uh, some crossover episodes, get you and uh, Evan back on the show again. Yeah. But uh, hey, for all your Wi-Fi news and you big, particularly Unify news, UI chat, check it out, folks. But that that's the point. And also, let's not forget that these devices are not going to have the number of, um, I'm thinking like the the 2x2, two two, the MIMO. Yeah, so like devices in the past, I remember my old iMac had like a 3x3 three three MIMO capable Wi-Fi chip. Uh, iPads, maybe iPads in the past have had it as well, but we're starting to see devices now going back to 2x2, two two, mainly probably for, for battery battery life reasons, because you're opening up another one of those lanes for communications but as wi-fi itself has incre- like improved over time that's less less of a requirement and you still get the speed so and 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 that's it right i think oh, jay's doing oh, no jay not that two by two um okay yeah, but, yeah, but, uh, go on so for, just for context i put in chat no a load of the animals in the archie archie two by two sorry <laughs> I don't think I don't think Noah's Ark had ubiquity gear on it somehow. You never but, know. No. But <laughs> the point I was trying to make about all this is ju- just because 
other devices have may have Wi-Fi seven does not impugn there you go the connectivity quality of the iPad. Because what what are you going to be doing on an iPad that needs multi gigabit connectivity? No, and also like. I, I tend to view Apple's de- Apple's decision on when to adopt certain Wi-Fi standards as a very restrained mm. take. Just to walk, without running too much down a rabbit hole, Wi-Fi oh, standards themselves get ratified or, or signed off by by the, the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi alliance. But from what I understand, Wi-Fi seven has only just been signed off or has yet to be signed off. Right, and I I don't think Apple is going to adopt Wi-Fi seven possibly until. Or maybe the iPhone 16, or possibly maybe even the Wi-Fi, the iPhone 17, because they want to make sure that nothing's going to go wrong. And you get companies like Netgear and Era that just jump on the bandwagon and do all these pay videos without too much of a consideration. Um, so yeah, I, it's probably not really worth it. <laughs> that that um, um, that's why I but, asked. <laughs> yeah, and like like yours, like your like what you said, the people don't consider how fast their internet connection is, and I guarantee. Um, most people can probably get by on a forty megahertz channel on five gigahertz. That's why that's why I run at right. home. So, so, and, and the uh, these devices are made ye- a year or two prior in the in the, in the pipeline. Mm. They've been making these chips for a while. Oh, yeah, and if it's just ratified, and if you absolutely need that connection, there are Ethernet adapters. I've plugged my iPad into it for a, a, I had a reason why uh, uh, for. For a media thing I was doing, and I plugged it in that way. Right. Well, that's the thing. You know, that TS4 dock and an iPad Pro can do 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. If you're wanting that throughput, you're probably going to be at a desk doing something. Just plug it in. Yeah, um, I've got my iMac plugged in the whole time. So yeah, yeah. I've got well, my you, Mac Mini plugged in. Oh yeah. So the only my only my, my you know, and it's into a lovely little Flex Mini. I don't, don't know who gave me that Flex Mini. I actually so, do know. Someone very kind on <laughs> not me, yes. not me. So no, very very kind of him to actually. I think I got all three of mine from you, didn't yeah. I? From Alex, yeah. I think I got all three of mine. Yeah, thank you, Alex. They okay. are wonderful little switches. Can I, I can I just uh, geek out? I um, James's face when he opened that up was just like oh yeah. so like <laughs> I, 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 I I just so happy, and I just want to say, Alex, that that made his day so much. So oh, that's yeah. awesome. No, it was really good. Uh, we will do it. We look. Go back and check our Unify episodes. Um, go and check out UI Chat. But I just wanted to do that little diversion. Now, I, I don't. I mean, look, the iPad lineup at the moment. Let's let's go back to the, the choose an iPad, okay? Because I think this might be our rounding out thoughts, right? Until the final cuts, and I want to go over the final cuts. Oh, oh, I do. I think, oh, you're right. I think we missed something as well. You know, the base iPad that's now got a landscape camera. Oh, that, yes, it does. Well, that that it, it was the first to get the landscape camera. Oh, was it? Have I missed that already? Yeah, that that was that okay. was in the tenth gen, so that okay. is not a new device. Okay, <laughs> but I'm Make glad that they've finally done this because so many times you're like uh, trying to like do either Face ID or you're trying to do something you're like, or like video chats are so awkward. You're just like, I'm over here. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's just, no, it is. It is really interesting. Now uh, that actually, uh, can someone just quickly check on me at tenth gen iPad price because. We are going to loop back to the pro apps, actually. So that, thank you, Jay. The ten gen iPad price is now three forty nine. Right? Yeah, it's three forty nine in the UK because the prices are exactly the same, which actually disadvantages me and James. Uh, James so, well, no, uh, no, it doesn't. It's Does it not anymore? Not as much as you'd think, because remember, oh so yes, take, remember they, the our US cousins do not have sales tax included on anything. Yes. So if you so if you take our price, take off twenty say, well their sales tax is different. Uh, but it, it gets very messy. So our three, price say go on. Three forty nine in, in American money is four forty three. So well, I'm take gonna, off twenty I'm try to take off twenty percent on an iPad. Take and... a, uh, don't use my credit card. Um two eight eight two nine. Oh, it's like five, six pounds more. Right. Basically. It's, yeah. it's not much, really, is it? No, it's not, is it? No. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. As Jack says in our chat, they advert taxes afterwards, so impractical to compare. Yes, so impractical. Well, Fair imp- enough. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I keep forgetting that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's an interesting one. But at 349, okay? 350. Let's call it 350. Okay, I hate the 49. 
I know why they do it. I know why companies do a pound less or a penny so, less. I, dear, you're going to be getting a uh, three seventy five tar- dollar charge on your <laughs> on your car. The tax on that was twenty six eighteen. So okay, right. So yeah, we still pay. Maybe a li- we probably pay a little bit more. Anyway, the point yep. I'm trying. To I'm looking make forward is- to this iPad. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> The point I am trying to make is that three hundred and forty nine dollars or pounds, three fifty, okay, for but again, I think my tenth gen is such a good tablet, such a good device. Now, yes, you can uh, you can get cheaper tablets, and we know that because we helped. You know, we uh, we helped Jay's sister buy or, or help people to buy her for her birthday a Android tablet, and that's because she's in the Android eco Android eco system and did not want to go ipad and i get that but for me ipad is the best tablet experience i would say honestly again way the the tension versus the ipad air i would definitely say i would go ipad air and 11 yeah. inch because i'm sorry i don't well one my my purses i can't fit a thing anything bigger than, than 11 inch in my purse but also I don't need the pro stuff. I, I honestly, I don't need that. I just need stuff to like do a little bit of crea- content creation, but I'll, I'll mainly consume stuff. Well, that's it. And I think the iPad Air is, if you are not that the iPad, I think is, I the iPad is a great device. The iPad 10, 10, 10, 10th gen is a great de- device for you know. I actually nearly got uh, 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 someone I am um, helping with tech onto one. They decided to go a little because the, it was a bit more at the time. They went for the ninth gen. Wish we'd waited a little bit, to be honest. But I think if you just want a tablet computer and you don't do much more than web browsing, chatting, and consuming content, tenth gen is perfect. Absolutely. If you want to create or do some more serious stuff, the I think the iPad is brilliant. And I think Alex, you were am I right, Alex? You probably in the market for a 13 inch ipad air right now that's that's what i ideally want because the equivalent the equivalent version will be like over a thousand right of the pro so yeah and did you realize all of our devices now all of them can fit into an envelope like the macbook air could and the first i still remember the the old commercial the i'm a new so i'm gonna stop right there with that song i always look and (laughs) that was it could fit into a a mailing envelope and now they all can (laughs) Well, yep. that's it, right? And, you know, remember that MacBook Air flo- uh, was not a success. No. No. It wasn't until we got the next gen, the 11-inch 11, 11 and the 13-inch, where the MacBook Air became a powerhouse and the sa- you know the sales revolution it is. But the iPad Air, great device. Again, you get a lot more features. You get a lot more connectivity. You know, USB-C, three, uh, 3. whatever, 3.2, I think it is. Yep. is more than fast enough for most, you know. No, I mean, you know, pen drives. Um, I've got um, a little caddy there from, uh, connected to my Mac Mini, which is a NVMe SSD to USB 3 point something. That's perfect for me. Yep. You know, I can still do external displays. You know, I can connect it to a Vocaster if I want to, and I can do anything I need to with it. But, but I think the pro is, if you are, a, a, probably what I would say is, and this is where I want you to, before us, if you are a creative professional who relies on curl accuracy, who wants really, really fast workflows, um, because we saw you saw a lot of CAD workflows that have been boosted by the new processor. You see, I mean, games performance on these new things looks incredible. Well, and factor in one of the things, especially on the Pro, that amazing access to like a to like a high definition display. I mean, you literally could do a lot of things that you would do on a on a on a laptop on an iPad. Well, this is what I want to... Because a lot of the commentary around these iPads has been, they're still not a Mac. They're still not running Mac OS. And I want to... I, I get where people are coming from, right? But I'm sorry. I don't want Mac OS on a tablet. Yeah. No. Uh, it's not... Yes, I'd like more power features out of the iPad. And look, at this point, we have not yet seen iOS 18. We have had a preview of what's going to be coming into iOS 18. Um, obviously, Apple have teased a lot of AI features. Mm-hmm. I've, now, that's going to be really powerful because you think about what that means. These chips have, these systems on the chip have incredibly powerful neural engines, neural processors. 
That should enable on-device AI. And someone um, on Mastodon said, in a way, I, they, I'm paraphrasing, me effectively said, in a way, I hate the fact that Apple cares so much about privacy that it means their, their AI is not as advanced as others. But actually, I don't know about the rest of you two. I'd much rather have AI privacy. Oh, me yeah. too. I mean, can, okay. can I just bring up a, a, not, not a quick tangent? Like, I switched from a Ring doorbell to a HomeKit doorbell. My, my, my new doorbell is HomeKit. It is local machine learning on faces. It recognizes faces really well. Like, it, it tells me, hey, your sister's here. Or, hey, it's, it's you. But that's not being fed into a global cloud of, of recognition. No. And I would much prefer that than all right, I would much prefer a local recognition and local AI than a global system. Well, just to loop back to our to our fan fan person uh, fan person fan fan fanny I don't know our fandom of Unify Alex all of Unify's AI stuff is on camera, isn't it? That's all on camera. Yes, yeah, so if it's detecting vehicles, people, animals, and things, the camera does all the work. And it will it will pass that back to the MVR itself. So, James, <laughs> you just got caught up by our mod, Jack. I, 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 I know Benny. I just funny. Hey, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant at all. Don't make me wash your mouth out with soap <laughs> when I come out there in August. Okay, you know what I meant, folks. I, I yeah. Anyway, the point is, on device processing is much better for privacy. It's really interesting. But the point is, we have not yet seen iOS 18. We know that there's going to be AI, AI features because Apple has started to announce that. And and honestly, some of the accessibility stuff. Now, Jay, I think am I Jay? Can I am I allowed to talk about this? You, the accessibility stuff that they previewed. One of them was um, getting Siri to understand non-typical speech patterns. Which now can I say for me is good because I have noticed compared to Madam A. Madam A is Amazon's mm-hmm. device. Lady in YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Siri has actually done better at knowing when I stutter or when I change a phrase. But you go even further. I'm I'm just putting myself out there. But one of our family members I'm excited for too. Go on. Go on, dear. Well, no, I'd say exactly as good. I mean, look, your brother in law. And because I actually sent the link to your sister. <laughs> Siri <stop. laughs> Well, Thanks, Siri, for moving in that recording. Oh, no, it's all good. Right. Jay's, one of Jay's brother-in-laws, who we love so much, had a stroke, has obviously, as a result, got impaired speech. With, um, I, I wanna, I'll say what they are, aphasia yeah. and apraxia. Right. Still as sharp as a penny, literally. Yeah. But it was not a, was no impairment in terms of men- capacity. But obviously they struggle with her speech. I sent the link to Jay's sister to say, hey, I'm really excited about this for your, for your husband. She said, oh, this looks so cool. I could see the excitement in her reply. Oh, yeah. And, and I think where I believe iPad, in fact, all, all of Apple's OSs, accessibility is not just an afterthought. Nah. It is baked into the core. It's one of the reasons I moved to Mac, right? back at, Genuinely, back in the day, Windows was useless at, uh, at accessibility. You had to have extra software just to zoom in the screen. Whereas on my Mac, I could just do control and scroll wheel. And I, I think that, yeah, or command. You, there were keyboard shortcuts to zoom in. It had OS-level screen zooming, which is incredible. Yeah. Voiceover, um, everything. I mean, natural, uh, the lie, uh, so much stuff. But let's wait for WWDC. Now, we are, I think, uh, we're going to probably do another live watch party. Um, I'll be up at my parents, but probably the week or so after we'll record another episode like this where we do a deep dive. Let's talk, though, about Pro Apps quick. Let's make our final thing Pro Apps. Now, I know all um, all three of us have Final Cut. Alex, you're probably more of a heavy Final Cut user than, than I am at the moment because I'm not doing as many videos as I should be. <laughs> That's, um, and Alex's videos are, are amazing. So, oh, again, absolutely. Answer, anyway. Yeah, That's, please follow the interface on, on, on YouTube as well. Um, oh, we And... I, I'm actually a convert from Adobe Premiere. I used to be huge in Adobe Premiere. I'm a convert back to Final Cut for a variety of so, reasons. Now, you're doing all of this on my Mac. And Final Cut on my Mac is, is really powerful. And in fact, they actually made it a little bit more powerful with bringing in this, um, I, I forgot what they called it, but the magic color thing, the thing that, that is on 
Uh, it's in Final Cut 10.8. Yes. It's for, yeah. But uh, what do you think to Final Cut on the iPad? I love this. Uh, can I say... Can I share one of the things I did years ago in video production that would have made things so much easier? Yeah. I used to do wedding f- photography and wedding video. Not anymore, okay. but I, I, nope. I did it once, and I did a multi-camera shoot. Oh, my oh. gosh. It would have been so nice. So they have come out with not only Final Cut, but Final Cut Camera. Final Cut Is Camera. Is out yet? Is it out yet? I should actually check. Let me. Let's but, just, it says coming things. soon. Coming yeah, this it, spring. Yeah. Okay. This spring. Okay. So Final Cut Camera is a free app which will let you record video and and like do all the different like settings that you need to. Sherlocking Filmic, and for good reasons, because Filmic itself, the, the company has gone way downhill. Um but anyway, like a free camera you could but if you connect it with Final Cut on Mac or iPad, am I right? Because if is it uh, I'm not I sure. I think it's just Mac. iPad. So okay. Just an iPad. So if you have Final Cut running on an iPad, which requires a M series chip, so unfortunately our yeah. iPads do not have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No. But if you have Final Cut running on on an iPad, you can in live time receive video or and or watch the video. So yeah. it, it it also brings in because Adobe had this really cool app a long time ago. It's Adobe, but it would let you watch video that was hooked up to a to a computer. I, I used this when I used to do my own right. like video mm-hmm. in my basement. I, I literally had a Mac. Or I, I had a, a computer ho- hooked up to my Fire FireWire camera. Oh, wow. But this will let you watch the video, do color grading, check all that stuff, yep. and, and even manually press record, manually color grade the Final Cut mm-hmm. camera things from one iPad. So you can have a director doing stuff, and then that director can 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 like can even like go between different shots that are all connected to it over and i'm like that is really dang cool i mean bear in mind that's over wireless connectivity for a start it's called live multicam yes looks incredible but not just that the 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 abilities but i mean they're like um i think one of the things they were showing was the ability to lift subjects out of the light video subjects out of the background yes. in Final Cut on the iPad. Without having to have a solid color background. Yes, that... without without keying. Yeah, without yeah. any sort of keying. Now, live. I've used... They were doing a live stream, I believe. I could be wrong, but I thought they were doing a live no, stream. No, no, it wasn't a live stream. No, okay. no, no, it was... Uh, but I've used LumaFusion, on my, and I own LumaFusion on my iPad, and that is great for editing. Honestly, it's great for quick edits. But the power of Final Cut... On the iPad, I'm uh, on the iPad Air M2, any iPad Air actually, but it's M series up with Pros. It's going to be powerful. This live multicam feature, we are seeing. I mean, all of Apple stuff, apart from like drone shots, obviously, are all shot with with iPhone. Yep. Um, yeah. I, you know, I um, I'm recording this episode with my iPhone 15 Pro. Um, I think Alex, what are you on? You're just well, I'm just on the iMac. I'm a, I'm a different disk based to usual. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I mean it, it, the camera still looks good. Yeah, yeah. But the the, the 15 Pro That's is what a I stunning use for my camera. podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. They're very good. nice. But yeah, I wish, that, but yeah. I wish the uh, continuity camera did 4K rather than 1080p, but it still is, still is very good. I Can wonder I... if that will change with mm. Final Cut camera. Anyway, go on. Can mm. I also just say I love how Apple's divorcing themselves from the computer because i did a phone call today with my home pod oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. well it, it's really interesting i mean i don't people have always been scared that the mac's gonna die off because of the ipad i don't think that's ever no, gonna be the especially case because... because sidecar i mean there's so many ways you can do things i think i think the ipad is an ex- extension in some cases it has replaced the mac in some cases because like yes my my grandmother she was my first, the first person in our family to have an iPad, and literally, oh, wow. it was perfect for her because she didn't, she wouldn't, didn't want to be hunched behind a computer. She was literally answering all of her emails in my on parents, the iPad. My parents have, and my parents have my old iPad Pro nine, uh, the original nine point seven inch. That is their only computer in my house. Uh, well, beyond all the junk ones that are probably still in a lot, but um, it's really interesting. Yeah, the Mac's going nowhere because it's. Excuse me, still a lot of software. But 
Final Cut wasn't the only app that got a bit of an update. Logic Pro yes. got a big update. Now, a lot of cool little things, but one of the things that, re- the thing that really impressed me is this idea of the stems, where you can take an existing file, an audio file, and split it into your its component parts. Mm. It can take music and split it down into the drums, into the vocals. I actually have have I've messed with this for podcast editing and all that years ago using Isotope, and that was and that that took a lot of work on a on a on a PC slash Mac at the time. The fact that they can do this on an iPad is pretty dang cool. Well, that's it. The power again, musicians. Um, we were talking to our friend Sonata, who we're going to have on the show to talk about the, the music of games, right? Yeah, because it's a really interesting topic. Mm-hmm. But he does work his stuff. I think that excited him, and the ability to have all these session drummers and session bass and and guitars. Look, I mean, I played with Garage Band on the iPad. I haven't used Logic because the AMA don't have an MPC of his chip for a start. But the ability to make music anywhere, and the fact that you'll be able to get audio interfaces, you know. I could right now, if I took you know uh, my Vocaster out, I could sit on the iPad and just record with it, with any USB C mic actually. Uh, in fact, I've tr- I've done, s- s- I've just realised something. The biggest challenge we always had with our previous recording platform. I was just about to mention this. Go for, yeah, go on. You, you yeah, mentioned, it, yeah. There's an app for. There's actually an app for macOS coming soon with this software, which 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 is um what's the name of the Riverside. Uh, we're using it. You, oh, you guys are using it. Oh, we're cool. using the beta. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then there's um there's a, there's actual native apps because I tr- I filmed a, f- a couple of podcasts with people on their phones and I hadn't realised that they were on their phones until afterwards and some of the video got messed up so I had to rely on the backup. So that's really cool that um, Riverside has got uh, dedicated apps for its software so you can just yeah, use it. I think that's well. It's going to be well. That's exactly what I'm thinking. The the iPad, particularly the power of these pros, I think just makes them a content creation. And if you are someone who needs a, a bigger screen, you know, the, imagine video production on that 13 inch iPad Pro. Yeah, it's out of probably our price ranges for most of us. But for content creation, for directors, for musicians, it's such a great option. I I'm excited. So go on, Jay. And Logic Pro, I have recorded and edited podcasts on it. It's not my preferred editor, but I have done it. And and, and, and but it's- that's old. That's old Logic Pro, Jay. This is the logic on the iPad is so different. True. I, yeah. Cut this. No, no, you no. I'm not going to cut it because it's a valid point. What what we I think, and this is maybe actually that Jay that makes a really astonishing good point. Okay, when we're looking at what the iPad pros can do or any m any m series ipad okay what when you look at an air or a pro and you look at the pro apps or creative apps i think you have to disengage the connection between what you've seen before on a mac for example i've used lot and i know jay has i've used lots of podcasts uh, audio editing apps across multiple platforms fair right for me and we've got a great interview with Canis on on the, the making of Ferrite. It feels natural. It feels so much natural to work with, effectively, work with an audio pad, right? That, that's how I see Ferrite. And then be able to take my Affinity projects onto my iPad with a optimized infrastructure, optimized tool set. So, Jay, what's your yeah? What's your question? Can the does Final Cut work? on the airs or just the pros oh no anything okay with, any, anything with an m series chip yeah because you can install so 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 you don't even need the no. pro ipads no. to do these features i mean obviously no, you, you'll be have some performance bottlenecks depending on what you're doing yeah anything anything with an m series chip will will run it i, I mean you could my yeah so my my macbook air far outperforms with video rendering performance of my be- old beast of an Intel iMac, which had 64 gig of RAM. It had a you know relatively powerful chip. Anything M series is going to blow that stuff away. I mean, Alex, you you moved from an Intel machine to M series for video production at some point, I believe. 
Yeah, I, I well, I bought actually bought an M1 iMac before I even started doing YouTube stuff. Oh wow! So, happy, okay, ha- so sort of a happy so you, coincidence. So you've never experienced the pain of editing on an Intel? Okay. No, no. What about you, Jay? Have you done more? Have you done because you've you have actually moved across platforms so much? You've moved. You were Premiere on Wintel. You've had an Intel Mac, multiple Intel Macs, and now you're on M series for your Mac Mini. Have you found the M series, the ARM based, basically, is it better for editing video? Absolutely, because I, I mean, the old adage was you had to be on a MacBook Pro to get any decent edi- editing, and now I'm on a pretty bare bones Mac Mini, which I never would have expected to do video good at video editing because i had a macbook pro before i moved to this and if i ever and honestly i think the m series takes away so much of the heavy lifting on stuff that you can get away with the with a non-pro device and really ask yourself do you need to spend the money on a pro series moniker on anything no well and i think that brings up our my final point right if you these devices, right? If you're currently on a, a previous gen M series iPad, you've got to ask yourself: Do you actually need to upgrade? I know we want to upgrade. It's a, kind of this recurring theme, isn't it? But we talk about sustainable. Don't throw away stuff. At, I think honestly, though, if you're coming from a non M series iPad and you like Alex, for example, and you want to start doing creative stuff, I think these new machines are a perfect option, especially those Airs. Yeah, Alex, any, to wrap up, any final thoughts on what Apple have sort of brought to the, well, table? I don't think it's a good a good update. Like they made the cheap iPad cheaper. They made, they launched the new iPad Pro. There's a good update. The only downside of the event was the, the iPad, iPad Mini didn't get any love, um, which is a bit of a shame. So yeah, When's the last time it got updated? Well, the current one, there's six, like the new design. I think that was 2021. And is that an M series? It's not, is it? It's, it's an A14. 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 I mean, look, the iPad Mini's always been a bit because it is weirdly priced. The iPad Mini used to be the cheapest iPad. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, it was. I mean, yeah, it yeah. was. But, but it's not anymore. It's like it is. I think it's actually it sits between the tenth gen and the Air, and I don't understand that. But no, it was a. It at one point it was just the small iPad Air, which made sense. But yeah, but for what I use it for, it's perfectly fine. Um, but yeah. Oh no, I'm, I'm I'm sure it's a great device. That's not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not impugning. What I mean is no, when no. It, back it, when the original iPad Mini came out, it was at about the 240 pound mark. Yeah, I I bought that one, the original one. Mm. And yeah. that was I had I had both because sometimes you just wanted my iPad Mini was effectively my Kindle replacement. Yeah, for a lot of purposes. Fair enough. Yeah, but that's that's my take. Jay, what about what about you? I mean, what's your obviously if for now, what what's your take on on where we stand with the product lineup? I think that it's still a little confusing in my opinion with the tension iPad. I still, I just find that a little confusing with the iPad because to me, I always think Air, Air always t- had been the best or the lightest iPad. The iPad t- was the one that had more features than the pro so i think if they i think the air is a a a misnomer in in, in many way i know it's light but i i'm still of the old adage where i used to think it was yeah and and i and and now ipad is the not the ipad itself and, and and i say that the uh the ipad to me i think that they should probably drop the air moniker and just say ipad and ipad pro because i'm gonna argue against that because there is a reason let me give you the reason education the education market will not want to spend the money on the ipad air the uh, the ipad is the perfect device for school use it is again a perfect just a tablet device well what i'm what i'm thinking is is the iPad Air next generation becomes iPad and they make the, and then they bring this current Air to be that the iPad right now, the 10th generation was, is the cheapest because it's the oldest one. 
I think going forward, you just have a cheap iPad, like an, like an, like an M4 iPad, and you have the M5 iPad. I mean, you, I think if you drop the Air going forward and just have iPad and iPad Pro, I like can have iPhone and iPhone and, and iPhone Pro. I think if we, but you don't have MacBook and MacBook Pro. You have MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, but you don't have Mac. You don't, but you don't have MacBook unless I'm mistaken. You don't have um, not any, anymore. No, not anymore. So, well, and that was that was a really interesting thing, wasn't it? But when when the MacBook existed, it was actually more expensive than the MacBook Airs. Yes, and and that. And and I, and I think that's why I I think we need to get to a place where we can drop these. the The lineup is still confusing. If you're trying to decide what's what where to go, that's, that's at least my opinion. I mean, I, it's getting better, but I still think it's a it's a little confusing. Okay, all right, Alex, t- I'd love your take on that because it's an interesting point. I've always thought it's a bit confusing that the name, the nomenclature behind it. Mm. It just no, I. It sh- but yeah, what do you, what would you call the iPad tenth gen for education? I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't think I don't think they can make an iPad Air at the same price as that iPad. Unfortunately, top of those specs, they need a middle one. Well, oh, do they? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's so confusing. It would be nice to have the 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 grid of four that Steve Jobs had, the the consumer and the pro of everything. But we unfortunately just we haven't got that. You've got to have the gold locks. You've got to have the middle best and best. Uh, sorry, middle better and best. So um, well, it, yeah, because that we don't have that grid of four even in the Mac space anymore. We do on the well we have because on the, we've got on the on the notebooks we do we have Air and Pro. Yeah. Right. On the desktop as well we don't we have four. Yep. T- yeah. And all, uh, two consumer and two pro. Well, no, 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 um, because you've actually got three uh, on the desktops. Yeah. On the desktops, yes. Sorry, I was thinking des- yes, desktops. You got the mini and the iMac, and then you've got the studio yeah, yeah, and, the, yeah. and the Pro. Yep, which is still a bit of an odd, yeah. But okay, I mean, yeah, but it's because I'm still, I'm still, I am still confused. Like to me iPad Air would be the I know it's the thinner one, but it it seems like it would be the cheaper one, and the Mac and the iPad would be the more expensive one, and that's where I'm in my head. It's still confusing. But that I mean that hasn't been the case in the iPad lineup for a very long time. I know. I'm just trying to think of a new consumer coming into the store, into store, being like, "No, I want iPad. You want iPad Air, iPad, or iPad Pro? I want iPad." And I'm trying to think. Well, that's where that's where that three four nine. If you've got someone coming in who is, again, going back to my point of co- content consumption and browsing an email, that's your iPad customer. Okay, your Air is your. I'm a bit of a creative, and I might want to do some content or more work on it. And the Pro is, yep, give me all the power. And I don't personally. Okay, I'm going to open this up, folks. If you're, you know, obviously listening uh, post recording podcast at crosswires.net come and join me discord crosswires.net forward slash discord come and tell us what you think i want to hear from people but for me i can't for me that lineup kind of makes sense but i do get where you're coming from jay um you're almost it's almost confusing yeah what if you were to do ipad ipad plus and ipad pro the problem with the plus is the plus is always always be the bigger screen so i'm actually amazed what we don't have is ipad air ipad air plus ipad pro ipad pro plus but they haven't done that and in fact they don't do that on the max either if you think about it they've Hmm. always delimited it by screen size that is very true so and in fact even now hang on yeah because on the uh, the i oh yeah, because is there a Mac size? Is it is there an iPhone iPhone 15 Max or is it just the iPhone 15? It's called iPhone 15 Plus. Yeah, which is really interesting because it's not called Plus. I'm a Pro. Yeah, it's Pro Max. It, it look, Apple's naming Jay. I'm not. I'm not all disagreeing, but the naming convention is weird. But I don't think you'd want to. Oh, iPad Lite, iPad, iPad Max. Uh, no, you can't call it that. 
you can't call it the iPad Max because that sounds like that is going to cause someone to go into the wrong store and ask for iPad Max and come out with something completely different. Is that why someone put it, told me to put it? Never mind. <laughs> but <laughs> that, that makes a good point. I like that. I, I like that the iPad Lite. IPad, that is, well, that's starting to iPad, iPad, iPad. Yeah, that could work. Hmm. Though the only thing with the, the only thing issue with the iPad Lite, uh, and again, I'm not trying to be it's a, a pedantic. The only thing is, is, is it make the iPad Lite sounds like you're missing features from the iPad. Because you read, yeah. Wait a minute. What about iPad SE? Yeah, that's better. That's much better, actually. Yeah, iPad SE, iPad, iPad Pro. I like that because because just like the Watch SE, because because you know when you buy the Watch SE, it it is a special edition. Yeah, and then the iPad Mini could just be a, a smaller version of the iPad. Well, and bring yeah. it back down in price again. Well, yeah, but it would just be a just be a smaller screen size version of the of the middle. Oh, of middle, a regular the iPad, child, yeah. of a yeah. middle child, right? Yeah, yeah but. but because I I, I I know the I know Kindle's amazing and I and I, I I've seen a lot of Kindle to have one. But an iPad mini with uh did I believe iPad Mini had a true tone. With with a true tone display, it it is that that eye strain is not the same as it was on old iPads. <laughs> yep. Well I've got I've got mine with a five G uh SIM card in it. Oh, so whatever I'm did. out and about, I don't even use my phone that much to see the iPad, so that makes a lot of sense, yeah. But five G, five, yeah. I read that makes a lot of sense. All right, there we go, Apple. Yep. That should that should credit to uh, James, Jay, and Alex. And s- I've send, had send checks yep. to Crosswise. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, yeah, we'll we'll div- we'll divvy it up with Alex. Um. Well, I mean, effectively, you are you are honorary yes, Crosswise absolutely. at this point, Alex. I think. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah. There you go. I mean, heck. Cross wire, uh, not uh, cross charging state. It started out as a co production between our two little it did. empires. It did. The media um, empires. empires. We're not media empires. I mean, you know, uh, out one day, one day. Anyway, one day, gadget, we'll get them one day. Gadget. So, um, right. On that <laughs> note, let's wrap up because I'm very much aware of time. Alex. Thank you so much, as always, for being here. Um, where can people find more of the... I mean, we've plugged... Uh, Alex doesn't pay us, by the way, to have him on the show and plug his content. We genuinely like Alex's content. Thank you. Where can people find your stuff? Um, so, Technology News, Automotive News, TheInterface.uk. It's a brand new website. I don't know if you've seen the old one, but um, trying to something new with Webflow now. And then we've got three podcasts. We've got uh, Charging Status, UI Chat, and Creative Spotlight. So different podcasts for different people. And then last thing is I've got uh, automotive videos over on YouTube as well. Um, so the interface cars, go and check those out. Thank you. And of course, if you want, uh, Alex also works for Hostify, who do some really cool Unify videos as well. So there we go. There we Those go. are made by you as well, aren't they? They are. they are. There you go. There we go. Jay, I was going to say, where can we find you? But everybody knows where to find Jay. You're uh <laughs> Sorry, that sounded really, really stalkerish. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I can't. <laughs> you know where to find me. I, I, I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Oh, sorry. I'm just. I, I do, do you know where my mind just uh, my mind just went to Liam Neeson in Ted Two. I was thinking that tricks is for kids. Am I gonna get? Am I gonna get in trouble for buying this? Okay. No, no. You, you I, should, you're, you should be good. you're not going to. No, anybody? No, we don't have the budget. For that. <laughs> we don't have a budget. And speaking of not uh, having a budget for that, I, I'm going to remember you. I would prefer you if you did it. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, Jay, thank you very much for being here. Of course, um, do check out crosswise.net for more information. Uh, thank you so much to Riverside for possibly, I'd say, so far one of our best recording experiences. Um, and the live stream. Yes. Thank you, to, uh, Twitch chat, for your entertaining comments. Um, we will we'll announce more about how we're going to be doing and maybe when, because I don't think every episode is going to be live streamed. It will very much, very much depend on guests. Guests and timing, because I mean, there, there, I know sometimes it's nice, some episodes it's nice to do, to do those not live, so we will figure that part out. But I, I definitely am glad we're doing live again. Absolutely. Right. Let's uh, roll the outro. Where's me mouse gone? Plus me mouse. You don't need a mouse. You, you got an iPad. Thank you. 
thanks for listening to this episode of Cross Wires. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and we'd love to hear your thoughts. So please drop us a note over to podcast at crosswires.net. Why not come and join our Discord community over at crosswires.net forward slash Discord. We've got lots of text channels, we've even got voice channels, and we've got forum posts for every episode that we put out there. If you are Mastodon, you can also follow us either by heading over to wires.social or just follow crossed at wires.social. If you'd like to check out more of our content, head on over to crossedwires.net slash YouTube for all our videos and keep an eye on our Twitch channel at crossedwires.net slash live for our upcoming streams. If you like what you heard, please do drop a review in your podcast directory of choice. It really does help spread the word about the show. And of course, if you can spare even the smallest amount of financial support, we'd be incredibly grateful. And you can support us at ko-fi.com slash crossed wires that is ko fi.com slash crossed wires until next time thanks for listening